Pain is a symptom that you cannot treat. What you can treat is the autonomic nervous system and the patterns of tension that are being held within the body that are causing the painful symptoms. So what's the big idea of this video? Well, in Lisa Feldman Barrett's book, How Emotions Are Made, The Secret Life of the Brain, she's, she makes note that emotion, chronic pain, chronic stress, depression, and anxiety all involve the same interoceptive end control networks, and that's what this video is about. Through the discipline of postural restoration, I've been helping people with pain for about the past 13, 14 years. I was also doing a lot of strength and conditioning before that. Uh, and of course, I've documented on this channel my own journey with chronic pain. Uh, one of the biggest mysteries is why some people's painful symptoms do not recede, do not diminish, while others do, when there's no tissue damage, uh, when there's no actual injury. When you go to the doctor and they say, they do the MRIs, they do the imaging, they say, no, nah, everything looks fine, just go to physical therapy. But of course, there's nothing to rehab. So... The question always is, in a lot of people's minds, is why? Why is that pain there when there's actually no damage to the body itself? I never discounted the experiences of anyone who said that their pain went away when they did this, or when they did A or B or C. It could be things like when I stopped eating sugar, uh, when I stopped eating flour, when I started taking this supplement, when I started to sleep more, when I started to take a certain medication. Uh, when I, for me, I remember I had hip pain that went away. This was many, many years ago when I started taking vitamin D, which then also helped me sleep and fall asleep. So the underlying issue is the autonomic nervous system, but also at the same time is this idea of homeostasis or allostasis, but let's just stick with the word homeostasis, meaning how the brain and body regulate themselves and keep energy uh, flowing appropriately and diverting, diverting energetic resources to the body to meet the external changing circumstances of the external environment. That's, uh, al that's uh, allostasis, that is homeostasis. And there is a theory among neuroscientists that to me seems the, like the most, um, most reasonable explanation is that the feelings in our body and our emotions are really based off of that homeostatic sensory input to our brain. And what we experience as emotions and feelings are based off of our bodily, our, philis, our philly, uh, philosophical, uh, our physiological processes that are occurring to keep our body in a state of homeostasis. As I mentioned, in post restoration, we're not treating pain because pain is a symptom. We're treating an underlying pattern of right dominance, of tension that restricts the body's movement, the ability to move without compensation, and the resulting uh, instability that occurs in the body. Now, that would certainly be an autonomic nervous system issue, a homeostatic uh, issue. When, if you cannot breathe properly because you're stuck on one side of your body, and remember that right diaphragm and the left diaphragm are not the same because you are not a, you are not a symmetrical human. If you're only using one side of your body and every time you put your weight on your left foot, you're using your hip flexors and your lower back muscles to stabilize your left side and thus you're not using your left diaphragm to breathe, but now you're using your neck to breathe. Well, that's easily an autonomic nervous system homeostasis issue. And your brain can report back or your body can send signals up to your brain that there's something wrong with this system. This, this homeostasis is thrown off. Our respiration is thrown off. The whole system is starting to not prop, uh, function properly. So from that perspective, postural restoration is treating that dysfunction that's leading to these signals of pain and discomfort. There is no tissue damage. Remember, that's the important thing to remember. The, it's the, the tissue, the, the discomfort is coming from struggle, from strain, and from tension. So in the book, How Do You Feel? An Interoceptive Moment with Your Neurobiological Self, he writes, our affective feelings, what we're feeling inside of us, whether we're feeling good or bad, derived from the brain networks that generate flexible and adaptable emotional behaviors, which evolution built by expanding upon the ancient homeostatic neural systems that automatically take care of the body. That's the autonomic nervous system. So what he's saying is that how we experience emotion and feelings is based on top of this underlying autonomic nervous system, autonomic nervous system that's regulating homeostasis. It's built on top. And what we're feeling 
is simply, and that would include pain, is simply a signal that something's off with homeostasis. Now, if someone's brain is saying, that's way too much sugar, hey, you know what, you're not sleeping enough. You know what, you're, you have some vitamin deficiencies here. Would that not send vague signals or maybe even painful signals to your brain or that your brain is interpreting as pain because that's the key to it? Uh, could that not happen? Well, it certainly could. So what are these homeostatic sensory signals that are being sent up to your brain? Well, things like thirst, hunger, cool, warm, itch, prick, burning, sharpness, taste, muscle burn, joint ache, cramp, things that you're all familiar with. Uh, blood pressure, heart rate, effective touch. Effective touch is like um, calming touch, like loving touch. Stomach distension, rectal distension, and more. And importantly, from the ventral vagal system. I made a video about the whole ventral vagal system issue, how the hardest people to treat or help are people who have issues going on with their jaw, their teeth, and their vision, or their tongue, or their throat, which is the ventral vagal system. Why is that ventral vagal system so important? Why does the brain care so much about what's going on here? Well, the trigeminal nerve, facial nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus nerve, an accessory nerve, which is really your, your neck. Uh, it's all about orientation. Where am I? The brain has to understand where you are. Communication. Humans have to communicate and feeding. So obviously, if you're not feeding, if you can't eat, you're in trouble. That's why this part, this is why the, the jaw, the teeth, the vision is such an important part of all this. Most people are okay in that regard, but when they're not okay and their jaw is shifted or they have missing teeth, or what, and this is, again, the story of my life, this is why it was so hard to get out of that autonomic nervous system tension that was causing me so many problems for so many years because all my issues, my physical body was never the issue. The plantar fasciitis, the SI joints, the shin splints, the neck spasms, that was never the issue. I just, that, those were my symptoms of vagal of of the dysfunction autonomic nervous system dysfunction that was being created because of ventral vagal system that was completely dysregulated because of the jaw position and how my my visual system responded to the inappropriate jaw position all of this information is being sent up from the body to not only well, also to the brain stem which then get passes it up to higher levels of the emotional area of the brain as they would call it but it's also being sent to the, to the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic trunk, the, the rib cage, the spinal cord, where we extend. So extension is when a, when a pelvis comes forward on one or both sides, and then the back, your back will arch. That's called extension. That's fight or flight behavior. That homeostatic sensory information is being sent to the areas of the spinal cord that produce that extension uh, um, behavior, that extension posture. So yeah, so if things are not being regulated from a perspective of homeostasis, you're sick, you're ill, uh, you're eating incorrectly, you're not sleeping enough, you're stressed out, whatever it's going to be, that can result in patterns of tension and tension is exhibited through extension. And that's what we are actually trying to treat in posture restoration. So it would look like this, all homeostatic sensation, all those feelings and sensations that I just listed are sent up through the autonomic nervous system to the brain, to the brain stem, and then to higher levels like the hypothalamus, the amygdala, and a lot of other areas that you don't really have to know right now. It's fascinating, but you don't really have to know it. But those interoceptive and control centers, that's where all that information is being sent, then feeds back and controls the autonomic nervous system. So that's, that's the loop. So if you're already feeling something or your brain is sensing something inappropriate, uh, that travels up to the brain, to the interoceptive, what you're feeling, the feeling centers of the brain, the emotion centers of the brain, and the control centers of the brain that say, hey, do this because of this. And that's the loop that we can often get stuck in. And post restoration, when that loop goes wrong, <laughs> Uh, when things go on for way too long, that system just kind of spins out of control and you can start to experience not only pain symptoms, but just symptoms of feeling bad. I mean, I've had tinnitus since I was 14 years old. I'm pretty sure that's really why. It got stuck in a loop and at this point it's not going to change. Uh, but anxiety symptoms, pain symptoms, depression symptoms, just unhappiness symptoms, you're, you just don't feel right. And then that, that changes how you think about your own life. And what you need to realize, and this is where this book called How Emotions Are Made really can help people, I think, is give them a new perspective on what's actually happening inside this brain and body. Now, there's an important distinction to be made between 
the uh, somatic sensory activity, which is actually what we're using with PRI techniques that are about hamstrings and abs and breathing. We're using somatic sensory activity to then try to regulate the autonomic nervous system. So we're not using the, we are using the autonomic nervous system through breathing, but those sensations and feelings that I mentioned, you know, before thirst and hunger and discomfort and all these, um, homeostasis signals, homeostatic signals, we're not using that. We are using this skin pressure uh, or the, the pressure of a surface against your foot, heel, arch, big toe, uh, stretch. When, if I shift into my left hip, there will be a stretch of my left posterior hip capsule. Vibration, well, vibration is going back and forth. Uh, muscle and joint positions. We're putting people in positions to effectively use the muscles that will pull the pelvis back into a neutral position and stabilize that pelvis and the muscles that will get that spine out of extension and get it into a state of neutrality. PRI techniques are using those muscles through those somatic sensory sensing to produce that outcome of regaining stability, regaining proper diaphragmatic breathing to then decrease sympathetic fight or flight activity. So, PRI, that's how we are doing it. When you, when, if you hear about the left heel and right arch, why, why that's so important? Because your brain needs to sense pressure from the ground underneath those areas to understand how to go to the left side so we can get off of our right side and reestablish a more balanced autonomic nervous system, which means pain signals will generally start to go away. So as I alluded to earlier, emotion, chronic pain, chronic stress, depression, anxiety, all involve the same interoceptive and control networks. The pain that people are feeling is a construction. This is what she's saying. Now, it, to me, it makes sense because I, one th I didn't learn anything in high school sports except that people are jerks. But beyond that, I did learn one thing, but it wasn't directly from playing. It was from what my, uh, something I noticed, a truism that my coach said. And I said, wow, that is actually kind of true. My football coach said, your body doesn't hurt as much when you win. And that is true. When you get your butts kicked, oh my God, your body kills. You get blown out, your body killed. But when you win, uh, you don't feel anything. I mean, you might have an ache, but it's nothing compared to when you get your butt kicked. And that's the thing. Pain is so subjective. It's not yes or no. So a lot of times they'll say, oh, well, it's just it's um, these neurotransmitters that dampen pain and, and then you feel it eventually. And that's certainly true also. But the reality is, having worked with people for many, many years, again, I'll get lists of pain and I've been there. I've, I've had those lists and they'll have a, a list of symptoms that they've experienced everywhere. And then, you know, one day I'll say, Oh, how's, how's your knee? And they'll say my knee. And I was like, well, yeah, I wrote down, you said you had terrible knee pain. Like, Oh, I guess I forgot about it. So people forget about the pain they have. Things get magnified in times of stress, in times of emotional upheaval, in times of, of unhappiness. All of the, the networks of the brain that process emotion are the same networks of the brain that process pain. It's all interoceptive feelings. And when life is not going well, again, if you've ever read John Sarno's book, he was kind of making the same, uh, he was making the same um, observations. This was 30 years ago. And this was before even the this was before the brain science was that involved. And he, but he, so he wouldn't have known exact, he knew it was the autonomic nervous system, but he wouldn't have known it to the, to the degree that Lisa Feldman Barrett is talking about uh, because the insula was not well understood. And this is where the, 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 the interoceptive network is. It wasn't understood back then in the eighties, what was going on or what that part of the brain was all about. But he was making the point that people's back pain, this is how he got famous by saying, you know, I'm looking at your x-rays, I'm looking at you, and all your back pain does not match up with what I'm seeing. And he was convinced that uh, the pain that they were getting was a distraction from underlying emotional anger issues. He said he thought anger was probably the biggest, the biggest part. And he said, you know what, you might not even know what the issue is, but I can tell you there's nothing physically, there's nothing structurally, physically wrong with you. Autonomic nervous system, maybe that person says, oh really, but man, okay, there's nothing wrong with me. A couple days later, the pain goes away. Why? That nervous system shut down. The stress and the tension and the fear, 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 the fear factor. If you're fearful, 
that you're going to be hurt. Well, you're probably going to get hurt. It's just self-fulfilling prophecies. So for a lot of people, just reading that book, his, his famous book, the, the, the back pain book, and I always forget the name of it, but that was enough for some, for some, some part of that brain to say, oh, all right, charades up. That's not going to work anymore. So forget about the pain. But that, of course, that doesn't work for everybody. It might work for a lot of people, but it doesn't, not going to work for a lot of people. So for posture restoration, we're trying to eliminate, are you unstable? Some people are. They are. And that's what PRI is going to restabilize them so they can diaphragmatically breathe again, decrease their, their, their need to use their neck for breathing, and the whole system relaxes. And that's the break they needed. And the nervous system says, well, the, the brain says, oh, okay, I guess I don't need these signals of pain anymore. So there's a reason, and you can find this in the research, why chronic pain, depression, anxiety are often found together. Well, she just explained it. What we can do in postural restoration is make sure that you have all this, the appropriate sensory inputs so that your brain does not detect threat and you do not get autonomic nervous system uh, produced tension based off of, uh, or pain based off of tension that your brain is providing or producing to hold you steady, to tighten you up, to protect you. Good pair of shoes, heel arch, big toe, minimalist. I mean, if you really want to go that route, but you're not going to be successful in a PRI program with stabilization with minimalist shoes. I've already made that. I've already shown that numerous times and I don't feel like talking about it because it's just an absurd argument. Um, heel arch, big toe. You need that sense. You're not going to get it on flat floors with a minimalist shoe. You need something different. Uh, this uh, near and far, if you're not wearing your glasses and you need them, you're going to stay tense. I I can't show this any more times. Uh, I had a young man come in to see me. I showed him how he cannot pass any test. He can't feel a muscle. He can't feel any muscles appropriately unless he wears his glasses. And he told me, mm, I'm still not convinced. Ah, I can't do anything else. And you want molars and canines, two sides of the mouth, a jaw that's free to move. When you have those things, your body will get better. I'm, I'm convinced. Uh, We'll stabilize you. That's going to work. If that's all there, we stabilize you. you you're, you're passing your integration tests and you're still having issues. At that point, you got to really uh, think about life. You got to think about, are you happy? That's, that's going to be the biggest thing. If you're not happy, if you feel like you're wasting your life, if you're doing a job that you feel like you're wasting your talents or you don't even know what your talents are, I've been there and it's a lot of negative energy. That's going to exhibit itself in tension. Uh, that will interfere with the PRI post restoration programming because you're going back to a tense. If you have to go home to a tense environment, uh, your your family life, your work life, uh, the relationships the relationships that you have. Do you feel like you have purpose? Are you sleeping? How is your? Are you eating too much sugar? Could be. I mean, again, you can't discount because you can't discount things just because they don't make sense to you. Anything that reg, anything that you're that you put in your body. Any environment you put yourself in is influencing your brain and your body one way or another.